Today on America's Test Kitchen, we're taking a trip to the Mediterranean. Dan makes Bridget the ultimate grilled swordfish skewers with tomato scallion caponata. Jack challenges Julia to a tasting of feta. And Becky makes Julia a fresh recipe for Egyptian barley salad. It's all coming up right here on America's Test Kitchen. About 30 miles from the Turkish coast lies the Greek island of Ikaria. It's been called the island where people forget to die. <laughs> One in three residents on the island live well into their 90s, and the island is home to a large population of centenarians. Now, the reason for their longevity is a combination of low stress, happiness, and the Mediterranean diet. But by diet, we mean a holistic lifestyle, not counting calories or grams of fat, but rather living well and eating lots of olive oil, whole grains, vegetables, and fish. So today, we're going to show you two great Mediterranean-inspired recipes. First up is grilled swordfish with tomato scallion caponata. You know, skewers on the grill, well, they always sound like a good idea, but they rarely turn out great, especially when they're fish skewers. Lean fish is so easy to overcook, and if you choose the wrong type, you're gonna end up with this. I mean, check this out. The fish, well, it just comes right off of the skewer, and it's obviously overcooked. If you look at these vegetables, they are undercooked. No even cooking here. So Dan is here, and he's going to show us that skewered fish and vegetables, well, they don't have to be a fishtail. <laughs> That's true. They don't have to be a nightmare. And I, I'm going to have bad nightmares about those over there. <laughs> and you should. So it's all about choosing what should go on a skewer, what shouldn't. So we're going to walk through a number of different things, and we're taking a real Mediterranean approach. OK. So we're using tons of great vegetables, and we're going to end with these grilled swordfish skewers with a really nice tomato scallion caponata. This Sounds great. Awesome relish on top of it. So we're going to start with our eggplant. And eggplant is not something that we need to skewer. We can slice this really thin and get tons of grilling flavor on it. So okay. we don't need to do that. So I'm just going to cut this on a slight bias into about 10 pieces. An eggplant is one of those vegetables that will test your knife. And it's going to quickly tell you if your knife is sharp enough. So make sure you have a very sharp knife to get through the eggplant. It's also one of those vegetables that you really need to cook through, yes. or you get that spongy kind of quality. Absolutely. So sliced thin like this, these are about half inch slices. They're gonna cook through really nicely. Now we're gonna get to our tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes, if you just throw them on the grill, it's not very fun, <laughs> right? So they're a great item to skewer. But notice, I'm just gonna skewer them all by themselves. Okay. Right, these aren't gonna be with fish, and that means that we can get them on the grill and then off when they're done. Not, we have to cook them a little bit longer because of the fish or vice versa. And you want a nice cheat tray, and we'll just put it all on there. I also have six scallions here, so I just trim them up. You can see that they don't have the little furry roots on there tassel, anymore. Tassels, I little, call it. You, tassels, that's so <laughs> fancy, I like that. And then we just trim the tops off. Okay. Right, so these guys are good to go. Now let's get to the star of our skewers, swordfish. The type of fish you choose to skewer is also really important. You want something that's really sturdy. Swordfish is the perfect fish for it. These are some steaks here, and what I'm gonna do is cut them into pieces that are pretty even in size. We want them to be about one and a quarter to one and a half inches. And this is pretty cleaned up swordfish already. This has a little bit of the bloodline here, which isn't a problem, but you can absolutely trim it more, or you can have your fishmonger do it. Nice big chunks. Nice big chunks. Yep, they're not gonna overcook. I'm gonna pat them dry. So another really good tip when you're doing skewers is you wanna do all your seasoning before you put them on the skewer. You get all the different sides. Once they're skewered together, it's a little bit more difficult. That's right. So we're gonna start with a tablespoon of ground coriander. Do you like coriander? I love coriander. Me too. It's so lemony and citrusy. I feel like we don't use it quite enough in this country. I'm also gonna use some kosher salt here. You notice what Dan is doing. He is sprinkling everything from quite the distance, and that's going to ensure that all the spices and the seasonings are more evenly dispersed all right, so I'm just flipping these over. And as I'm doing that, I'm kind of rolling them in any of the stuff that was around there. We want just good seasoning all over. At the end, I like to get it kind of in my palm. It's easier to get the rest out. Rain it down on that. <laughs> and a little more salt. OK, and finally, hit them with some nice pepper. Very simple rub at this point. Very simple, yep. yep. So now I'm gonna skewer. I have three metal skewers. Metal's really nice. It's not gonna catch on fire, which is a bonus when it's going on the grill. Yes, always. Um, and that can be a problem. You know, they catch on fire or burn a little bit, become weak, and you try and take them off and it just falls in there. So metal's great, reusable. And these are flat metal skewers. They're not round skewers. So the food's not going to rotate around like a pinwheel. We don't want that. No, no pinwheels. And another thing that you're doing, Dan, is compressing the fish together so it's going to protect the fish on the grill and it's also less apt to fall off. 
Okay, so our fish is all set. I haven't mentioned these yet, but we also have two lemons that we cut in half, and we're gonna grill those along with the fish. Sounds great. The final thing we're gonna put together before we get to finally start grilling is a vinaigrette that's gonna be the basis of our caponata. We're just gonna start with two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, two more teaspoons of coriander, we get that flavor in the caponata as well. We love it. We do love it. Next, I have one and a half tablespoons of honey. Next up, I have a tablespoon of grated lemon zest. It's gonna help bump up that coriander citrusiness. I have two cloves of garlic that have minced. I have a teaspoon of ground cumin, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, a quarter of a teaspoon of ground black pepper, quarter of a teaspoon of cinnamon. That combination of coriander, cumin, and cinnamon is so representative of the Eastern Mediterranean. It's yeah. a really great combo. Really distinct flavor, and it's very warm. And then finally, I have an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. Again, really building on that warm spice yes. profile. So I'm just gonna stir this together here. You can smell it already. I know. We've got some raw garlic in here and these spices that we really need to bloom. So oftentimes we do that on the stove top, but it's really easy to do it in the microwave too. So just gonna take a minute in the microwave, bloom all that, it's gonna smell great, and then we're gonna head out to the grill. Bridget, we've got our gas grill heating with all of the burners on high heat. So it's nice and hot. It is super hot, I can feel it from here. First thing I'm gonna do is give it a nice clean with our brush. And the next thing is we're gonna oil this, and we always oil the grill before we cook on it. It's especially important when we're cooking something like fish, and we're gonna do it a number of times, 10 to 15 times to really get a nice coating on there. All right. Well, you know, when we're cooking fish indoors, we like to use a nonstick skillet or a well-seasoned cast iron skillet. Both of those offer a level of protection so that the fish releases very easily. We want that same insurance out on the grill. So what Dan is doing is he's adding oil to hot grates. Now, when the oil goes onto the hot grates, it polymerizes. Basically, it creates a nonstick barrier in between the protein, in this case fish, and the hot surface. So we've oiled up our grates really nicely. We're also gonna do the same thing to all of the food here for the exact same reason. Okay. We want a nice nonstick coating. Absolutely zero chance of sticking at this point. That's right, that's what we're going for. Every single thing's getting oiled. Gotta get it all. <laughs> I see a theme here. Well, plus the oil, especially with the vegetables, helps with browning too. That's right. All right, time to go on the grill. We're actually gonna start with the eggplant, which is gonna take generally the longest to cook. And I'm gonna stagger my tomato skewers over here. Everything's on high heat. Okay. What's really nice about this recipe is everything cooks within a five to 15 minute range. It's a very Mediterranean style of cooking. You know, just kind of throw everything on there and pull it off when it's done. <laughs> so for my fish, I'm gonna do the same thing in the center here. Just give it a nice angle. Mm. We'll get some real pretty grill marks on that. And then finally, our nice lemon halves go down. So I'm gonna cover this here and we're gonna cook for really five to 15 minutes. We're gonna pull things off as they're done. And for the fish, I'm gonna try and rotate it a few times to get some nice browning on all sides. All right, let's see how everything's looking. Gorgeous. Beautiful. So there are some things that are done already and we're gonna get them right off. So the scallions, those go real quick. So we'll take those off. The lemons are also in really good shape. Beautiful that char. Beautiful. It's amazing how a little bit of grill time really intensifies the flavor of the lemon. It's true. And then our pretty little cherry tomatoes. I flipped them one time. Those look beautiful. Zero sticking. Zero sticking. I know our fish is good, but just to be sure, I am gonna take a temperature. We're looking for 140. Oh, nailed it. Spot on. All right, now we'll get our beautiful fish off. Okay. And that's the last of our fish. Now our eggplant, let's take a look here. It's looking nice. I want to give it another five minutes or so. Okay. We want it to get really nice and soft. It's going to make that coffin out nice and creamy. Okay, this eggplant is looking really good. So I want to get that off the grill as well. Ooh, you can see it's nice and creamy. Beautiful. But not too charred. It's not burnt to bits. No, not burnt to bits, but nice and tender. Mm -hmm. We can head inside. Sounds good. Look at all this awesome grilled food we have. It is beautiful. I almost hate to eat it because it's so, no, actually, I don't. I don't know I hate to eat it. I can't wait to eat it. Can't wait to eat it. First, we're gonna deal with the lemons. This is our vinaigrette that we microwave, so it's not raw anymore, has lots of great flavor, and we're gonna build on that and make our caponata. Citric acid is really volatile, so some of it cooks off on the grill, so this tastes sweeter and less acidic than normal lemon juice. Now I'm gonna add a quarter of a cup of Kalamata olives that have been pitted and chopped. Some nice brininess. All right, let's get to our cherry tomatoes. So we're just gonna slide these right off the skewers. 
And I love these. They're basically just blistered at this point. They've got nice flavor, but they're still really juicy. And we're gonna give everything a nice rough chop. It's gonna go into our bowl. Now these are really plump. Sometimes when you grill tomatoes, they can get too charred and start to dry out, but these cherry tomatoes are nice and plump, actually turning into a sauce right before my eyes. Bridget, would you mind passing me that bench scraper? This is kind of the perfect job for this guy here. So I'm gonna pick it up and transfer to our bowl. Did you do plaster work in your last <laughs> life? <laughs> How did you know? Okay, so here we go. We're just gonna chop these scallions up. We want a nice coarse chop on them. Into the bowl. All right, now it's eggplant's turn. I'm just gonna make a few nice piles. Great, that eggplant looks awesome. So that also goes into our bowl. I'm just gonna stir this all together. Doesn't that look good? It is beautiful, and I love that you chopped everything pretty evenly, so it's going to be easier to eat it. We'll go fancy. We're gonna go caponata down on the plate first, make a nice little bed for our fish. Some beautiful pieces of fish on there. And finally, we've got a little bit of minced basil. Just goes right on top of the fish. Perfect, I mean, that's stunning. Almost too pretty to eat, almost. Almost. Mm. You know, sometimes when you add a spice rub to fish or anything, it actually can be too spiced. This has a really nice gentle coriander flavor. It's beautiful. The caponata almost steals the show, honestly. I really love that. Mm, both of them together, it's kind of perfect. This is changing the world of fish skewers. Great job. Thanks, Bridget. Our recipe starts by cutting swordfish into chunks. Season with salt and spices, and then thread onto skewers, but don't forget to thread cherry tomatoes onto separate skewers. Place sliced eggplant, scallions, and lemon directly on the grill, then toss with the cherry tomatoes for a quick caponata. Finally, finish the dish with basil. So from our test kitchen to your kitchen, grilled swordfish skewers with tomato, scallion, caponata also known as delicious. <laughs>
Oh, so you're easy to please? All, yeah, I am. I guess I just like all kinds of feta. <laughs> all right, let's so let's see. start with this one. All right, Julia, you've chosen a Greek cheese. Mm. You chose Dodoni. So this was the runner-up. This is a sheep and goat's milk. We really like this cheese. It has a little bit different flavor because of the goat's milk, but it's an excellent choice. All right, so next, this you, one. You chose the other, the oh, real Greek. This was the winner. Know? That one is 100% sheep's milk. They're both great choices. Gotcha. All right, and this one? Uh, this is Organic Valley. We didn't really like this. This was at the bottom of the rankings. It's an American cheese. It's made with cow's milk. You seem like you'll be happy with it. Our <laughs> tasters were not so happy with it. Okay, last but not least. Uh, this was the best of the American choices, Boar's Head. Again, still cow's milk, but it was more interesting than some of the other American cheeses. All right, so America does have some catching up to do when it comes to feta. So when you're shopping, buy real Greek feta at about 87 cents an ounce. Barley was one of the first cultivated grains, dating back 10,000 years ago, and its popularity has never waned. Today, barley is the fourth highest produced grain in the world, behind rice, wheat, and corn. And it's very popular in health food circles thanks to its high level of dietary fiber. And today, Becky's here to show us a new way to enjoy this ancient grain. That's right, it really is an ancient grain. It dates all the way back to the Egyptians. I'm gonna be making a main course salad featuring barley, and it'll have some nice Egyptian flavor. Sounds delicious. Yeah, it's really good. I have four quarts of water boiling here. I'm going to add a tablespoon of salt. We're going to be cooking the barley using a pasta method. That just means boiling it in lots of water. This is pearl barley, and you want to make sure to look for that, not hold or holeless barley. It'll cook faster than the other types. And it'll hold together better. That's right. I'm going to put this in the boiling water. This will take 20 to 40 minutes to cook, and I know that's kind of a wide range, but we found that different brands just took different amounts of time. So you want to start checking it at 20 minutes, and then when it's tender, you can drain it out of the water. So our barley cooked for 30 minutes. I drained it and I spread it out on a sheet tray here so it could cool off. It's been cooling for 15 minutes, so we can go ahead and make our salad. We're starting with three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. I also have some pomegranate molasses. Ooh, I love pomegranate molasses. Sweet, tart, mm -hmm. syrupy. It's one of my favorite ingredients too. It's just really boiled down pomegranate juice. And if you can't find it at the store, you can go ahead and make it yourself at home. It's pretty easy to make. That's right. And for a good DIY pomegranate molasses recipe, check out our website at americastestkitchen.com. So I'm adding two tablespoons of that pomegranate molasses. It's going to add a really nice sweet tart flavor. And I also have some other Egyptian spices here. Half a teaspoon of cinnamon. This is a really interesting dressing with the pomegranate molasses and the cinnamon. It's going in a very cool direction. Yeah, I think you're going to like it. Quarter teaspoon of cumin. I'm going to whisk that up. So we're building our dressing in a big bowl here. Now we can just go ahead and add the salad ingredients right to the bowl. Let's put our cooled barley in. So this trick of spreading out a grain to let it cool before tossing in a salad works for all sorts of things like potatoes, rice, and even quinoa. Let's mix in our barley here. That pomegranate molasses is almost taking the place of a vinegar in this dressing. That's right, because like I said, it has a lot of acidity and a little bit of sweetness too. Such a great ingredient. I'm also adding a quarter cup of chopped toasted pistachios. And I actually toasted these in the microwave. Put them on a shallow dish, put them in the microwave. Just want to stir them every minute until they start to brown. After that, start checking them every 30 seconds. Very clever. Yeah, really, really good tip, especially for a small amount. Yeah. And then a third of a cup of golden raisins. And when we were testing this recipe, we actually liked these better than the more traditional dark raisins. Both dark and golden raisins are made from green seedless grapes. They're actually just treated in different ways. The dark raisins are left in the sun to dry for several weeks, mm -hmm. and the golden ones are dried mechanically, and then the sulfur dioxide is added. That's right, but the flavor is actually quite different. It is. I find the golden ones to be a bit more fragrant and a little less hearty, a little less raisiny, for lack of a better word. Yeah, a little fruitier, a little fresher tasting. Okay, so we'll set that aside for a minute. I'm also going to be preparing a pomegranate. A lot of sources will tell you that the best way to get the seeds out of a pomegranate is to cut it in half and whack it really hard. With <laughs> I've them. done that. I've, I've done it, it too. It makes a total mess. It's a disaster, And right? pomegranate juice stains, yes. so it makes a mess everywhere. Yeah, we found a way that's a little bit easier. First, I'm just gonna cut off this blossom end. I'm going to score the pomegranate six times, just cutting through the skin here. One more time. And I'm gonna separate this into sections. And I'm, I'm gonna put it underwater now so that I, the juice, as you can see, is really messy. So if I work underwater, it's gonna contain the juice. So I just bend this backwards and it frees all of the seeds. And then I can just kind of pop them out. The seeds will go to the bottom of the dish 
and all these little white membranes will float to the top. The membranes float, the seeds sink, and you have clean pomegranate seeds. That's right. When shopping for pomegranates, choose ones that are large, heavy, so they have a lot of seeds inside, and make sure it has a hard skin on the outside. Also, know that the color of the rind can vary from a bright pink to a dark brick red, but that doesn't tell you anything about ripeness. It's just a varietal difference. So I finished up the pomegranates. I'm just going to drain this. So here's my pomegranate seeds. I'm just going to measure out a half a cup. Now, any extra you have, you can refrigerate those for up to five days, and they taste good in all kinds of salads. Yeah, I would actually gobble those up myself. <laughs> I probably wouldn't refrigerate them. Or it's a kitchen snack. <laughs> That's right. Mm. So we'll put this over here. This is a composed salad. We're not going to mix everything in. We're going to make some nice, pretty layers on oh, top. Oh, nice. Yeah. But before we do that, I'll add a half a cup of chopped fresh cilantro. Always good to add your fresh herbs just before serving. That way they don't wilt down. That's right. So if you want to hand me that platter. Ooh, this is a nice Mediterranean looking platter. Yeah, it's going to be gorgeous. So many nice colors and textures. OK, so we'll just put this out on the platter. And I'm going to arrange the remaining ingredients on top in diagonal rows to make this look really pretty. I'll spread this out to give myself a little base here. What should I start with? Maybe the pomegranates? Mm, yes. Little gems they look like. I know, they sparkle. They're so pretty. Looks really nice. <laughs> I love it. Three ounces of feta. So nice and salty. Mm, creamy. Some, yeah, adds a little bit of richness. And then I have six scallion greens that I'm going to add for my green row here. And so not the whites, just the greens. That's right. The greens are peppery. They have a nice grassiness, whereas the whites are milder. So we're going to use the bolder part of the scallion. Ta-da! Now we have some olive oil here. I'm just going to give this a nice little drizzle just to add a little more richness. Gorgeous. Now that makes a beautiful lunch or a light oh, dinner. What a presentation. I mean, this is worthy of company. It really is. I agree. So you notice I have our serving bowls already. <laughs> you are ready. It's a looker, but it also looks delicious. Let me serve you up here, and I'm going to make sure and get you some of all the goodies. Oh, yeah. There you go. Well, this was a real snap to put together. I mean, all you really had to do is make the barley and then toss it with the vinaigrette and some ingredients. Really easy. Really good for you. Mmm. It's very unique. It is. The flavor of the barley has a heartiness, but then you get the cinnamon, and you get the pomegranate molasses. Sweet. Salty, mm -hmm. lots of texture, lots of color. Thank oh, you. You're welcome. To make this salad, boil barley in salted water until tender, then let it drain and cool before tossing it with a pomegranate vinaigrette. Garnish with lots of fresh Mediterranean ingredients, including feta and pomegranate seeds, and you're golden. From our test kitchen to your kitchen, a wonderful new recipe for Egyptian barley salad. You can get this recipe and all the recipes from this season, along with our tastings, testings, and selected episodes on our website, americastestkitchen.com. This is a real winner. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.